Hey guys, welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a very simple gravity based minigame or puzzle kind of thing. So basically, this is where the exit's going to be. You're going to spawn down here. So, what you're going to do is walk here, you'll fly up to the top, you'll walk over here, come back down, go over here, go up, go over here, and come back down. So, like I said, it's very simple, but this is just teaching you the basic fundamentals of doing it so you can then expand upon that and make bigger and better ones in your own games. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we're gonna do first is find where we want to be able to change the gravity and put in some box triggers there. So like I say, I want to do it here, 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 and here. So I will place those box triggers in there. So if you just search up in the top left for box trigger, just drag and drop that in here, scale up to the size you want it to be. So basically when the player is in here is when their gravity is gonna be changed and all that good stuff. So I'm going to make it this big and put it about there, I reckon. Now you might want to be careful with these clipping through like this if it's in your actual game and the stuff behind there, but for me, this doesn't matter. So that works for me there, so I'll leave it like that. And then I'll just Control c Control v to duplicate this, like so, and then move it over to where I want it next. So I want that to then be up here on this one. I think I'm going to move it over like this, and again, scale it to the correct size that you want it. So I'm going to have it like that, and then duplicate it again, Control c Control v I'm going to move it down to this one now, so it's a move down here. So I think that'll be good. And then once more, finally duplicate it again, scale it to the right size, so I think I'm going to have it here, so it's just above where you exit, like so. And this one, I'm going to make the full length, like that. So that's the first part successfully done. We literally just placed in the box triggers. So we'll go up, down, up, down like that and then where we're going to be doing all the coding for this is in the level blueprint so if what we do is go to blueprints at the top here and then open level blueprint we'll do this all in here if we just make that a bit smaller like this minimize it like so what we'll do is select the first box trigger like this right click in the level blueprint and get an event begin overlap like so so add on active event begin overlap for this box trigger do the same thing for all of these so then get a reference to this one i'm going to put them in order so i know which one's which so this one again begin overlap like so put that under there so i know which one's which and then the third one down here begin overlap like so and finally the last one select it right click begin overlap now you could drag these all in and get a reference to them but we don't need to do that so this will be good so once you've done that maximize this again zoom in and we have all of these now you can name these accordingly to make it easier for you but i think for me this will work fine so like i say this is one two three and four so that's going to be good for me I'm just going to move these down a bit to give myself a bit more space and let's get started. So what we'll do is start with the first one, so up here. We'll drag off of other actor, what we're going to do is cast to our character. Mine being the third person character, but for you this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. So once we've done that, what we want to do is as third person character, we're going to get the actor location, uh, rotation sorry, get actor rotation, right click on return value to split structure pin, and then again as third person character, set actor rotation like so and again right click split structure pin x go into the x z we're going to the z and the y we're just going to do 180 and so what this is doing is basically flipping the character upside down so as the character flies up as the gravity is flipped it looks like the character has as well so the feet will be on the roof for when they're upside down so it's just turning the character upside down and then after this we want to add some force so that the character flies up automatically without the player having to do anything so what we're going to do for that is again as third person character we're going to get character movement which should be down at the bottom here get character movement like so and i drag off of this so drag off the character movement and we're going to add force like so plug that into there and on the Z, as we want it to go up, we're going to be doing minus 500, like so. So I have minus 500 force, meaning the player will fly up. And now after this, we're going to be setting the gravity scale so it does actually go up as well and stay up. So we're going to drag off character movement again and set gravity scale like this. And we're going to set this to minus 1. So it's just flipped gravity. Now the reason we have to add force as well as change the gravity is because changing the gravity is enough but you actually need to then update the character so it goes with that. So that could be jumping if you wanted to leave it as that but to do it automatically we're going to add some force to move the character. And then what we're also going to do just to make it look a bit better, stop it sliding about as much, is add some linear damping. So come off as third person character again, I'm going to come out, get capsule component, so it should be down at the bottom here, get capsule component, I'm just going to set linear damping like so plug that in there 
like that. Now, as you are upside down, the gravity is reversed. This is going to need to be very high. And then you could also just mess about with the gravity scale. So increase the gravity. So we're actually going to do that as well. So I'm just going to set this to something like 1000. Then also set the gravity scale to, let's say, minus 5. So then if we hit compile, you can test this one out instead of the other ones just now. So this is what you need for the moment. And we're going to minimize this and just test it out. So if we hit play, come over to this one. You can see that if we walk into the box collision like this, we then go up like that. And you can see that flows up really fast because of the gravity and we're sliding. So I'll, I'll just leave the gravity as minus one, but increase the damping. So actually I'll leave that as minus five, but I'll just change the force. So I tested this out earlier with just minus one gravity, but I can just do this instead. So we don't have to have the linear damping so high. So we set that to minus 200 now instead. We'll see what this looks like. So I think this is quite good. So you can see this is what it's going to kind of look like. Again, completely mess about with these settings to get it perfect for you. So obviously you might want different animations when you're upside down and stuff like that. So get different animations if you want. The force is how fast you're going to go up pretty much. The gravity scale is obviously the gravity that's going to be there. So the higher it is or the lower in this case, so minus whatever, obviously the stronger the gravity and the linear damping is how slidey it's going to be. So we just increase this a lot, so I'll just add a load of zeros. The linear damping and how slidey and floaty the character is should be a lot less. And so what we're going to do now is just select all of this, copy and paste it another three times for all of these down here. So if I just do this, move these down, and just organize this to give us some space with it all. So if we do this, like so. Now this doesn't have to look perfect or anything, but this is how we're doing it. So you just duplicate those and plug them all in. So again, just plug it into there and then other actor as the object class onto the cast. So plug them into the begin overlap event and other actor goes into the object wildcard like so. Now obviously we want to reverse this if we're going back down. So this top one is going up. The second one we want to go down. So what we're going to do is leave this as 180 because it's just going to flip it 180. The force we're going to put as 200 instead of minus 200. The gravity scale is just going to be set back to 1. And the linear damping is going to go back to default of 0.01, .01, like so. And then the third one will leave the same as that's going up again. Fourth, going back down. So 180, just 200 now. And then again, gravity scale of 1, linear damping 0.01. .01. Now this should work for us. So we hit compile, minimize, and hit play to test this. You can see that if we walk over here and go into the box collision, we should fly up like so. And if we come over here, we go into this one, we fall back down. This works perfectly. Well, I fell back down there, so let's go back up and go into here. And if we go back down here, we'll fly back up like so. Like this works perfectly. And if we come back into this one, we'll fall down and end up here where it says congratulations. So this can be the end of your level or can just simply move on to other parts of your level over there. And it doesn't even have to be on this 2D format. You can go any direction you want. This is completely customizable. Like I said at the start, I'm just giving you the basic fundamentals of it, which you can then improve upon. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so that we can set the gravity scale to be reversed, as well as flip our character upside down. So we can fly up to the roof and then fly back down again, fly back up and fly back down to just create this very simple, basic puzzle kind of mini game thing using gravity. So like I say, this could be the end of the level, further on the level, or you get a key here, then you have to come back down here to use on a door over here or something. Completely up to you, but I'm just showing you this part so far. So like I say, I think that'll be it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.